Okay, men, are you excited to be here? Now, y'all, it sounded like men. I have a room full of men, and I got yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all good? Yeah. We're going to talk today, and we're going to deal with some real men issues. And um, despite the presence of our female guests, we are going to really get down to the heart of, of the matters as, as our rule. I Am King is an initiative that targets mindsets. It's an initiative to get our men to, as the video said, think beyond becoming just a mere man. Because a man goes beyond your body parts. It's more than just having the right body parts that, at the right age for you to be considered a man. It is a certain ideal of manhood that we've somehow lost. A certain ideal of manhood that we've lost somewhere in being a braggadocio and in conquering women and getting as much toys as possible. And those concepts, how aggressive you could be and all these things, have led us astray from what it really means to be a man. And so we want to go beyond today's concept of being a man. I want to challenge our men to become kings. Because for sure we know kings are more concerned with the prosperity of their people, the protection, the safety of their people. So we, our objective is to spur our men, young men and older men, towards taking on that challenge of becoming the protectors, the providers, the caregivers, the strong men, the strong kings that we need in our country and in this world. So today, I greet you as kings. Yes, sir. Good morning, kings. Good morning. At this time, I want you to give a very kingly welcome to the Honorable Prime Minister, Mr. Marcel Gums, as he comes to give us some remarks. Um, <clears throat> ladies who are in the minority this morning, and gentlemen who is in the big majority, uh, welcome. I was asked to be here this morning to uh, <clears throat> address you and to uh, basically uh, make a contribution to this conference. Before I start, I want to, from the bottom of my heart, um, commend and thank the Minister of Education, Youth and Social Affairs, Mrs. Rita Born Gums, for this initiative, and also the ladies in our ministry, uh, Secretary General, you're invited, and in particular, is that a signal? <laughs> okay. Uh, and in particular, also Shermina, who um, I know worked very hard on this. Shermina was in my office up to last night at uh, around 8:30, uh, trying to convince me. She brought a, a speech, but then she tried to convince me to uh, give a testimony of my life. Uh, Minister, this is a very, very good initiative because, as you know, it fits in what we discussed as government back in December and in January when we sat in the cabinet. One of the first things we discussed in a very informal setting was that it is time for us on St. Martin to start building people. Building people in the sense of stop building the concrete and the projects and uh, whatever others want to build, wherever they want to build it. But it is time that we turn our attention to building people. And in building people, I think this, what we're doing here today, what the minister has organized here today with the staff, is the first step in a good direction of building people. And in particular, building our men in this society. Um, the, the prepared script tells me that throughout the world, throughout the Caribbean, we have 
have a problem with the imbalances where men are dropping out, young boys are dropping out of the school. The statistics are showing more girls are going to university, not only to the University of the West Indies, West Indies but also worldwide. I will not pretend to be an expert to have the solutions to all of these problems, but we have to start somewhere. And again, I want to emphasize today is a good step in the right direction. You know, if you follow what's going on and you pay attention, sometimes the media believes that we in government don't listen and pay attention, but we do. I, from time to time, not only now since I'm minister, but even before, there are certain blocks where I would stop by and try to talk and find out what's going on. And we have to tackle this together. We have to be able to bring over to the young boys that it is good to learn. It is good to go to school. It is cool to get an education. It is cool for you to learn. Because by learning now you will earn later. By learning now you will earn enough later not to be following those on the mopeds with dirty smoke and dirty shirts. But if you learn now you will earn. And when you grow up you'll be riding the Harley Davidson. And those who are on the mopeds will still be on the mopeds. But you will be looking better. You will be looking bigger. But it starts by learning and staying into school. You know, last night Shamina came to me and she says, Prime Minister, I have prepared something for you, but really deep down, I would like for you to give the testimony of your life. I said, Shamina, we need two days for that. <laughs> because yes, we've all. Nowadays, if you look at those in position and those who have got somewhere, we've all had our challenges. We've all had our rough times. I was one who graduated in 1969 from the Mural School here in St. Martin, the second best out of 10 students, but I couldn't go to study because I didn't have a passport. I didn't have a passport because I was born in Curacao in 1953. In 1950, the law was changed that you carry the nationality of your father until you get to 21, before you can get a Dutch passport. But guess what? I had a choice. I could have go and hang out with the bad boys, because even then they had bad boys. People believe that the whole issue of blocks and the bad boys is not in every generation they've had bad boys. But guess what? I choose to go not with the bad boys, but to go the hard way and start working and saving money. I was also blessed there was a nun called Sister Barkia who looked at me at the age of 16 and said, you cannot stay on this island. You've got to get an opportunity to go and for your study. You've got to pray. But it's not only Sister Barkia, it was the will and the desire to make something good of myself and to move on. And that's what I did. I left at the age of 16 without a passport and went to Kirisau. I couldn't get a scholarship. I had all the qualifications to be a good lawyer, but I couldn't go to Holland. But guess what? I did cry, but I didn't go with the bad boys. I stuck. What I had in my mind, that is to become something. I went to Kirisau at the age of 16, without a passport, without a scholarship. The month before I left to go to Curacao, I made $300 in four weeks on a backhoe. Doing the soil testing for Mother Bay before it was built. I left there with $350, $50 my mother gave me. And I went to Curacao. After three weeks, I went and I started working in a radio station, cleaning the heads, doing the media jobs. Then I got two radio stations to clean. The heads of the tape recorders. And I continued to grow. When I finished engineering school, after four years, I got a degree in electrical engineering. Again, I couldn't get a scholarship to go study for engineering. Again, it looked like the world was closing in. 
But strong determination told me no. There's more opportunity. And that's when I was about going down the spiral. Again, if someone picked me and slapped me and threw me against the wall and said, get back to school. And I went back to school, I studied air traffic control. I graduated and started with a class of 16, six dropped out after three months. Ten went to exams, five failed, two passed, three get re examination. Out of the two, one was Marcel Lund. I came back and I served my country. They sponsored me on that course at Martin. And I worked 14 years as an air traffic controller. And then one day my supervisor, Mr. Young Brown, he said, come go to a meeting. I said, what? He said that an organization for young people. It's called Junior Chamber International, JC. I went and I became a member. And then the book bit me, he gave back. He taught me about community development, personal development. He taught me the creed of the JC. You gotta believe in something. And you gotta serve your community. And from there, the bug bit me to serve my community. And guess what? After 23 years, I decided to pull back and kind of retire. And after eight years, in so-called retirement, I was called to serve as your Prime Minister. And here I am today. I share it with you that you can do that too. All of you in here can do it. You have to stay focused. Stay in school. Keep reading. Don't fall in the game. It is good to be a nerd. It is good to learn. It is good to work hard. It is good to follow the principles. It's good to have role models and follow them. And the role models are not those that is teasing you. That is every day on the block. That is going down the wrong path. They also got the leader, but their leader is a negative one, it's a bad one. You have a choice. But you have to make that decision. No one can make it for you. I hope today will be a successful day, and that when all of you leave here today, you have something to take on. In particular, you young ones. I'm very happy to see you here. I hope this will be a change in mindset for all of you here. That you can be the king. You can be the king in your world. A world of goodness. Not a world of gangsterness. Not a world of, of moped, smoky, dirty moped. Not a world of hanging your pants down and your drawers are showing. That's not cool anymore. And those who design those clothes and promote them and market them, they are making money on something that is not good. But you have the choice. The speakers today will tell you much more. I'm not the expert in this field. But I just want you to know that I too face the challenges many of you are facing today. When you have a good conference, and when you leave from here, your mind will be set on becoming a king, on becoming prime minister, becoming something, and make a contribution. But always remember, you have to learn to earn. I thank you. Good morning. I am in a room of kings, so let me hear you. Good morning. Good morning. No, Good morning. You see, this is my problem. Yeah. Yeah. If this room was a ladies' conference, <laughs> it would be roaring. I am in a room of kings, so let me hear you. Good morning. There you go. Now today, I don't have the testimony of the honorable prime minister, but today when I enter the room, and whenever I go to a function, this is the best part for me. For me to be able to recognize in the room persons who I taught about 10 or 15 years ago. And today the proudest moment was when I entered the room and I met a young man 
I was walking and he approached me and he said, Teacher Gums? And I looked at him and he said, it's nice to see you. And I said to him, it is nice to see you here. Here at this conference for many reasons. Because both him and I know that he has been through some, been through some challenges. And seeing him here today tells me a lot. That he is on towards greatness. And I want you to give that young man a round of applause. And I want you to look back at table number 16. Because when we always single out persons with a negative, but I'm about a positive. At Nago Benders, please stand.
and bringing yourself to a different level because of recognizing that within yourself. Most of us feel we have it, and some of us feel we don't have it enough. And we're still searching for it. When I say us, I talk about you gentlemen, and then you talk about us females. <coughs> and sometimes the reason we can't find it is because we're not certain of what it is we're looking for. What is that power, what is that greatness am I searching for for me, the individual? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of hints to search for. One of the first powers, search for your faith. Faith is like a seed. When you plant it, it grows. And sometimes even before you plant it, you know what it is you're planting. So you're looking to see what's going to bloom. Something else you can look for in terms of finding your power and finding your greatness is finding fellowship. Who are you associating yourself with? Who are you surrounding yourself with? What type of friends are there to bring you up and what type are there to bring you down? And for those individuals who are determined on bringing you down, I say back away cut them loose. Cut them loose because for them, if they're not in the same mind frame as you, whereas they want to grow with you and find their greatness, it's all about you have changed or you're not the same anymore. No, it's not about that. It's about you finding your direction and your place in society. When I look around the room, I'm happy to see that it is not only a room of young individuals, but older men. And to the older men I say, these young ones are looking towards you. They're looking towards you as role models. They're looking towards you as examples. They're looking towards you in terms of, do I want to be like him? How did he get there? What is the positive impact he's demonstrating to me? What is the positive impact he's displaying that I too would like to reach to where he is? Young yeah, what I will say to you, not only do you have to look at yourself as an individual to become the king that is within you, you also have to look towards others. And with this I mean, not only do you respect yourself, but you respect others. Respect, give respect to your mother, your sister, your female cousins, colleagues, gentlemen, your partner, your woman, your wife. Only a king knows how to treat someone of the opposite sex as a queen and rightfully so. Find within yourself that determination and that belief that's going to get you to where you need to go. And you know what? I have belief in many of the young men whose lives have touched directly that they can get there. Otherwise, I would, I would have never spent those hours that I spent with them, encouraging them and listening to them. Because your greatness is there. Go out and discover it. I want to let you know. Go and show the world your power. I would like to wish you a very positive, constructive, effective, good discussion conference. And when you leave here today, take the words of all the speakers, take the advice that you can hear amongst your table. Take that and help. let that help you on to discovering where you want to go. Because the only individual that can get you there is you. We can help, but you will determine where you're going. I look forward to speaking to many of you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you. My name is Shane Gibson otherwise known as Ryzen. One of my favorite proverbs says a man's gift
will bring him before kings, and he will not serve before obscure men. And indeed, this morning, it is my privilege to be able to stand before kings. Now, I'm going to do most of the talking this morning, but I find that there are bits of doom. So I'm going to request a little interaction. Is that all right? Yes. I've heard some yeses. Fantastic. I'm going to zoom in on one thing in particular, one essential quality of a king that is necessary. A king must be willing to fight. A king must be willing to fight. You see, if a king is not willing to fight, he's not fit to be a king. Because there will be someone, someone within his ranks, a usurper, some rebellious subject, who is looking at that throne and is interested in overthrowing the king and taking his place. Or there may be some king in a faraway nation who looks across and is envious and desires to expand his territory and he is gunning for that king. So a king has to be willing to fight to defend his kingdom. Do we agree with that? So my points are going to be taken from the five letters of the word fight. F-I-G-H-T. And this is where your interaction comes in. Has any of you seen that movie from the clip that you see in there, that video, that uh, picture? Yes. 300, yeah? yeah? That was one of the strongest. I was very inspired when I saw that movie. I mean, there was a lot of action, a lot of violence, a lot of blood. But that man exemplified a strong king. Do you agree? Yes. There was a particular song his army, his team made. A war cry when they were getting ready for battle. Do you know what that was? Oh. It was a whoop. Every time I say the word fight, I want to hear this group collectively say, a whoop. A whoop. With, with, with some conviction. You can't watch me smile and say that the same thing. All right? 